Hamlings, Hamlings, AK1 Green Mountain Maniac. Uh, you're asking yourself, what in the name of you know what is that? Well, I'm in the process of designing a 80 meter parasitic dipole array that I want to get up out in the front yard and get the cobra out of there, see if I can get some gain going on 80 meters. So I decided, well, I will do a trial run, uh, design a two meter dipole parasitic array. And what I've got going here, I've just basically got a series of jumpers. Uh, this is the stub length I pretty much settled on. This is 50 ohm. 50 ohm LMR 400, I had a scrap of it sitting around. I've been working on it. Um, basically, I get the dipole jacked in. Uh, this is the driven element right here. Uh, do yourself a favor, get plenty of these. Uh, little uh, brass alligator clips, high, high strength alligator clips. They are super handy. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to do this on a two meter uh, dipole array and uh, I'm going to extrapolate the information, the spacing, wavelengths, everything uh, over to the 80 meter array and hopefully give me a starting point. So I've got it kind of figured out. Um, so what you want to do is you need to place an inductive load on the dipole that is switched out. Of course you'll need a double pole, double throw switch, uh, which I will construct exactly like I have on the 40 meter array. Not a big deal. Done one, you can do it again. And uh, basically I've got two dipoles here. They're inverted V's. Two dipoles, they're the exact same length each one. They're spaced 13 inches apart which is 0.16 wavelength on 144.2 uh, and that's roughly the wavelength I'm looking at spacing out the dipoles on the 80 meter dipole array. So about 13 inches from here to here and what you want to do you've got your driven element here and how it's going to work is it's going to switch out switch in and out each element so this currently is the driver this is the energized element and this becomes the reflector so what you want to do is you want to get enough of an, a load on the the inactive element to make it see make the rf see this as electrically longer even though it's physically the same size ha <laughs> ha so that's the catch um, so this is what I've been doing. Uh, basically, this is I've worked this out so far using a field strength meter uh, along with an SWR meter. And I've got this down to a length of 50 ohm coax. It's fed with 50 ohm coax. Uh, the stub length, I've settled on about 53 inches, which works out to be 0.66 or 65, 0.65 wavelength on 144.2. Uh, that's what you want for an open stub. Uh, when this goes to the switch, theoretically, of course, this is going to be physically ginormous compared to the 2 meter beam. The 80 meter one will be. But uh, this will be, an, uh, when it's switched out, it will go open. In other words, the center pin and the shield will lift. Um, so let me grab the field strength meter and I'll show you exactly what's going on here. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to see if I can do this with two hands with three devices. So we need to key the radio, 144.2, and check the field strength. I'll show you what's going on with it. Here we go. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. We're in the front of the antenna, uh, checking the field strength. Okay, trying to keep from tripping all at the same time. Uh, this is the front direction of radiation, so we're going to walk around the side and come around the back side here and come around. We're on the back side, so we got about uh, one just barely readable to about a 1.5 on the scale, a, num a number one on the field strength, and it was a number five or more out the front. So let's go back to the front here. And uh, here we go. We got a uh, full scale. Sorry, having a hard time holding it. 
um, full scale Okay, we'll move back to the back, around the back side. Okay, so there's the back side. And there you go. So let me put this stuff down. Oh. And uh, so there you have it. Uh, that's, that is what she's doing. So I've got it to fire in the correct direction. And uh, from here, extrapolate the numbers over to the 75 meter uh, dipole array. Uh, one thing I did notice, this is kind of interesting, I actually had a stronger, I'm not going to do it now because my battery just went dead in the radio. Um, this element, uh, the way it's configured right now is an inverted V, right? So what I did was I took the elements and I flattened them. I went completely horizontal and it seemed like I had stronger a stronger RF field uh, and the angle of radiation did change uh, so I'm gonna have to mess with that a little bit but that, that I found particularly interesting anyways hope you enjoyed it be back with uh, uh, some more steps to the build as it is gonna be an ongoing process thanks for watching 7-3 hope to hear you on the bands the maniac